Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here with the most exciting news of the football offseason. Honestly, that's true. Maybe even when football is actually being played, we'll look back on it and say this is the most exciting news. And yes, it's stuff that we all pretty much already knew and kind of assumed, but there's just something about when you think something might happen, you're like 99% sure, you're still waiting for it to actually come through and, and then it's still exciting you get like two doses of excitement you get the anticipation like this is happening it's happening and then it actually happens and then you get that on top of it and yes we're not talking about anybody committing to k-state so yeah i know the, the rules have been thrown out for this show with drew and i nobody has committed and nobody has died but we are getting the rebirth of college football on PlayStation and Xbox, and we know for sure now uh, that K-State and every other FBS school is going to be in the game. So K-State, as well as everybody else today, they went and they made their little Twitter posts, very nice graphics to show, hey, we are in this thing, get excited, all that. Just another little tidbit to get people pumped up as we wait until May when EA is going to launch their like official preview and trailers and stuff for the game. But there was also some other news that came out today in regards to, hey, all the schools are in it, the conferences are on board, the college football playoff is on board. It's going to have it's going to be littered with ESPN personalities, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But probably the place to start and the most important thing as to why this game is going to be back this summer is that name, image, and likeness is going to play a significant role in it, and not just in the game, but how players are involved in the game. And we learned today that players are going to get $600 from EA plus the game for free if they opt in to have their name, image, and likeness used in the game. And we'll get into the you know the, what that all means and, and what we think of that in a second, but I just want to make sure that everybody is aware. I don't anticipate this being a problem where you're like, is Avery Johnson going to sign up? Is he going to take this deal? Every step of the way, Avery Johnson on his Instagram story has reposted something from EA Sports about the college football game. I don't think you're going to have many, if any, guys opt out because they're like, well, that's not enough. These guys are going to be so excited to be able to be in this game and be a part of it and have it back. I don't think the money is a problem here. So I don't think you have to worry about any of these K-State players being absent from the game. They're all going to be there. And as long as K-State is taken care of in this whole process, I could care less about everybody else. Tell them to screw off. <laughs> but you are going to have K-State like you want and need them in this game, and that is a major positive. Yeah, I think that there shouldn't be any real hang-up from K-State players along the way. I'm more excited for the guys that opt in when the ratings come out when they trash EA for what their rating is, that that's the part for me that I'm looking forward to the most. When and EA like, comes out and Kobe Bryant's rating is a 77 and yeah, his, oh. his pass coverage is like a 65 and you know, his, he gets a bunch of, he's low in like his knowledge, of the game skill or whatever, cause he's holding all the time. And then Jace Brown and Avery Johnson are just trashing him on, on Twitter for it. Yeah. That that's going to be fun. Like I, I can't wait for the ratings drop with the players being like, what what do you mean i'm not i'm not high enough like give, give me a 99 but it's so exciting that the game is back i mean i still have a ps3 and we'll fire it up every once in a while and the the thing that is hard for me about the game like I, and this is just with 14 is like once i start playing it's like oh i don't need like madden or anything else like i'll just play ncaa if i need like a gaming fix and we'll play it for like three or four weeks and then we'll just forget about every other game. So I, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, look, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh a, unfortunately last summer my uh my Xbox 360 crapped out Ooh. and now it just it locks up the it'll load the game and then it'll lock up the second you get in. So I've been I've I've not played for two seasons now that the college football or you know I still hang on to both NCAA basketball 10 and college hoops 2K8. So uh, the itch is real, and it's going to be exciting for for everybody that this is going to happen. Uh, I thought, you know, the the way that they they handled, hey, everybody getting their announcement out there same time, making sure it was all known that that just drives excitement and energy for this. In terms of the compensation that players are going to get for opting into this game, is it too much, not enough, or the right amount? 
I mean, I, I feel like it's the right amount because uh, for me, it's always been if you're going to be in this game, like you're not going to get a ton like the You have other NIL deals that you could sign and because you're you're taking away some of like what EA would be making from the game. So, I mean, it, it's it's more for me of like it, it's the perfect amount because you're making money on being in the game. Plus, you get a free copy of the game. Give me that free copy. Yeah, I think that I, I think it's probably the right amount, especially when you consider overall, like the majority of the guys that are going to be in this game, their actual value is is probably not even the six hundred dollars that they're getting to be in it. Uh I, I there are gonna be guys in this game that I'm not even sure they're worth the free copy. So you should be thankful that that's what you're getting. Now there are gonna be other guys that yes, their value is a little bit higher, but uh, if, if you read any of the releases today, there are going to be some players throughout college football that are going to be ambassadors for the game and are going to have the potential to earn more through that, uh, through NIL and everything else. And I would say, I mean, based on the hype and the notoriety that he's gotten, if not this year, there would certainly be a case that at some point in the next two seasons, Avery Johnson is going to be in the conversation to be yeah. one of those guys that is going to get more than the $600 to help kind of promote and pub this game. I would definitely agree with that. Like we're really looking at potentially next year, he could be one of the big ambassadors for the game, because like you said, he's also been reposting everything about the game so far. Uh, but like if you're a player and you're like $600 isn't enough to be in the game, honestly, you're, you're kind of lame. Like the, the game hasn't been, around since a lot of these kids were pretty young when the game disappeared so like if you're like oh nope six hundred dollars not enough for me that that's just kind of lame to me yeah i mean it's it's crazy to think about but the last time that this game came out avery johnson would have been like nine years old nine or ten years old when that like that's it's crazy that's the age that these guys that are playing college football now that they are they are in so uh, I think that I think that a majority of them will look at it and be like, "Yep, I'm all I'm all about this. This is all good." So I I, I doubt you have any real problems that that come up from it. Uh, in terms of what you're wanting to see from K State in this, look, I I think we're all trying to do some digging and figure out yes. what did K State send in? How are they going to be kind of catered to in this game? Because uh, I know that that Virginia Tech, some of their stuff was put out uh, last week or two weeks ago about what's going to be in. Look, we we both and many people watching this have played 14 and all the games before it, and there are certain things in there that you would go, hey, uh, you maybe were missing this or it would be nice to have this. Obviously, like uh, 14, they they still hadn't updated the the west side of the stadium or anything like that. So what what is it that you're hoping is in this game outside of the base of, all right, well, they're going to have you know the Power Cat logo and they're going to have the home and road jerseys, but what else do they need to have in this game for the K-State flair to, to be authentic for you? I need every version of the helmet that's been put out. I, I know that K-State hasn't won any, any of the... Well, the good news is the people that seem to complain the most about the helmets probably do not play this game or video yeah. games in general. So I, I need every version of the helmet that's been, that K-State's worn. I need the white pants. I'm really excited to see how the stadium looks and... Honestly, like hearing the crowd, I think will be really interesting too. Yeah, I think the, the amount of effort and seemingly like uh, attention to detail that EA is wanting to have for this game because it makes sense. Like they have not made this game in ten years, and so they they really had to start new. Like if you look at certain like other games that are out there, they had the they they would have the bases for some of this stuff. Like uh, for example, and I'll use another EA game. Like last year. I, I got EA Sports PGA Tour. So they hadn't made a PGA Tour game, honestly, probably close to that same period. I think the last one that they came out with was 2015 or 16, uh, was like the Rory McIlroy game. And even that was more recent. And they could take some of the things from that game that they still had. Like Chambers Bay is a golf course in this, uh, in this new version. That was the U.S. Open course that year. So they had it in that game. If they hadn't had Chambers Bay there, I don't think Chambers Bay is in this because I don't think the, the USGA is going back to Chambers Bay anytime soon. But like they had the base, they could do it with the way college football has changed since 
2014. It's changed a lot more than these golf courses have. Yes. You have basically everybody has done some major renovation to their stadium that makes it totally different. K State being the you know the poster child for that. The uniforms you basically have to overhaul all those because even like a team like K State that has not changed the design, though the way the uniforms are made and the way that they look are different than what they would have in that game. And there are so many other things. And then, you know, you talked about the crowd. They, they were asking, hey, send in these audio files, send in this one. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to see just how great of a link they went to to try and make it authentic, not just for the big boys. You know, I know that they're going to treat Michigan and Alabama and Florida and, and these schools right. But are you, are you going to be able to take care of everybody? Because this game isn't just about, hey, we're going out there and and selling a, a ton of copies for a bunch of money. This is kind of like a like a celebration of college football. And I think yeah. if if EA really grasps and understands college football better than what you know the annoying Big Ten and SEC commissioners do, college football is for everybody. It is about everybody. Take care of everybody and treat everybody right here uh, because that is the base of this game. And I think that's where it's going to be interesting as to, you know, are, are they accurate with when Wabash Cannonball plays during the game? Are they going to have, you know, cert, did they put the FKU chant in the game? You know, did K-State send that audio file in to make it authentic? What do they do? Uh, that one's a joke. I want people to uh, be very clear on that. But I, I am interested to see how that works out. So uh, it, that's all fascinating things. If K-State was as in-depth as Virginia Tech was, I, I think that you're going to see a lot of the things that like we've been talking about because I encourage everybody to look at what the, I think it was Virginia Tech's 247 mm -hmm. put out there. Like Virginia Tech sent like everything that you possibly could. And then there was an ESPN article today that came out and said that like uh, with one of the, play or one of the guys that's really involved in the game and said that one school sent like 200 pictures. <laughs> so like if K-State was put in half as much effort as like Virginia Tech and that one school that th that threw in 200 photos, I, I think that we're going to be okay. I just, I'm really excited because it's like, you know, on 14, the only alternate uniform K-State had was purple pants. Like, yes, yes we, yes, we could be getting like multiple different helmets, the white pants. Like, I, I'm just excited for that. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see how it all looks and, and how they integrate some of that stuff. Look, the, the white helmets and white pants should without a doubt be in this game. Uh, you you got to send those in because not, I, don't like, th I don't think that I will play a game with the traditional uniform. No, well, I'm a, <laughs> I'm I'm a renaissance man. I'm going to keep it authentic. So. Uh, you know, may, maybe maybe one game a year uh, when I when I schedule Boise State or uh, uh, UNLV to come and, and I intentionally lose that game wearing white helmets uh, just to keep tradition alive. I will do it for that. Everyone else uh, will get the, the normal treatment. Look, this is this is something about my uh, my video game playing style. Uh, some people will probably go, wow, you're a loser. Some will go, that's pretty on brand. And some of you will say you're a loser and that's on brand. Uh, I love, I love MLB the show. Uh, that's my, my favorite game that I play. And so every year I get it. I, I, I strictly play franchise mode in MLB the show. So it's me against the computer all the time, legend difficulty, all that, you know, trying to take the Royals to glory. I play all 162 games in a season. I, I don't simulate. I don't do any of that. I play nine innings, 162 games. And, if I'm at home and it's a night game, Monday through Saturday, I am wearing white with the Royals. If it's Sunday afternoon, I am wearing powder blue. If I am on the road, I am, you know, whatever. If it's a freaking Saturday night and I have to wear the City Connect uniforms, even though I think they're ugly and stupid, I wear them. They look terrible. I don't like doing it, but I wear them. That's just, that's how I go. I'm true to everything. I like the authentic experience there. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where I would fall in this with K-State. I would definitely bust out some good looks every once in a while, but I would intentionally lose the game then. <laughs> Two very different styles going into this. I, I say I might not play a game with a traditional uniform, and you are true to form. Yeah, I mean, look, I I, I want I want it to be real. I don't want – I'm not about making this just a fairyland. You know, video <laughs> games are meant to be real life, Drew. It's not supposed to be some – 
oh, you know, do whatever you want and have the time of your life type deal. Uh, one other thing that I want to I want to mention in here that I thought was kind of interesting uh, and it, it made me think earlier today was in terms of how this game is going to be played and what everybody is going to get out of it. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to, to K-State GA Vincent Johnson, who had a great tweet. Yes. Uh, because he said that first read option with DJ and Avery is going to make me feel 10 years younger. That is so true because I, I think if that isn't your first play you run, that or like four verticals, you're <laughs> doing this game wrong. But read option with Avery Johnson and DJ Giddens is going to be insane in college football 25. Yeah, it, it, you either got to go read option, four verts, or if you're a true sicko of NCAA speed option. 14, I was I was gonna say run a triple option play. Oh yeah, yep. No, I, I, I shout out to 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 my man Brett Platner, uh, one of the guys that lived on my floor freshman year. Uh, he would run the triple option on me sometimes, and I would I I about lost my mind. <laughs> I, I've never thrown a controller in my life, but if I ever had, it would have been when he was doing that against me. Uh, we, yeah, I was when he would, he would bust some of those. Out, I was like, this is great. This is uh, I think that's probably a good call there, but I'm a, I, in, in 2014, I was a strict uh, read option for verts guy oh, and, me too. and hope the quarterback had some mobility and uh, you just roll out every single time. And if the throw's not there, you just take off, which Avery Johnson will be, the perfect quarterback for that. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of random people that when they do like your three randoms and then you play because that's how you got to mm -hmm. do a, a play now. You got to yeah. do three randoms and you pick one. When they when they find K State, they're gonna be like, "Holy crap, this quarterback is fast!" All right, so uh, would you would you assume that Avery Johnson will be K State's highest rated player when the game comes out, or do you have any other candidates? I think it's going to be DJ. Okay. Right. I, I think DJ might be in the low 90s. He might be like a 90 on a dot. Seems like it would be high, but you're right. Like the production is there and how these games work. So, because uh, I was going to ask you, besides Aver, who do you think is the highest rated? But if you think it's DJ, then we know your answer there. I was going to say, I think it's just DJ. Avery just doesn't have the production yet in the game to where I think that he would be the highest overall. It, it'll be more of like, I assume that they'll update the rosters as the season goes on. That would be a good, that's a good thought too. Uh, that would be, do that. That would, I think that he could end the year as the highest rated player if they update their rosters. Yeah, that's, that's a good thought there. Will they, where the, where there'll be any of that. Uh, one of the things you mentioned earlier, we were talking about all the people that were in it, and we know that there's a plethora of ESPN personalities that are in it, and one fired ESPN personality, David Pollack. Uh, so it seems very clear that just like 2014, there will be ESPN-type production value in this game, which I'm all about. Like Going back to my authenticity that I like to play these games with, uh, I love the fact that 14, 11 through 14 had ESPN integrated. NCAA basketball 10 is probably the poster child for this where they had yeah. CBS or ESPN and for the real sickos out there that, uh, that are into this stuff like me, they might remember this game. There was, uh, the same studio that used to make that, that does make MLB the show. They used to make an NBA game. It was called, they had NBA, the inside and NBA, the life. And I loved that game because they used the TNT graphics in it. And this was like 2007. So uh, what is your hope and expectation here? Because we know we're getting ESPN, but are you holding out hope that maybe they integrate like Fox into it and you get some variety there? I, I hope that there is a second broadcast because I've said even with Madden, Madden's commentary gets pretty stale when you only get one broadcast feed the whole time. Which, by the way, God, Brand Godden does not even call NFL games. So, what what is the point no. of this? Madden yeah. is the one that it, it it pisses me off the most with the lack of authenticity in there. It's like you couldn't go out and you know get Joe Buck and Troy Aikman to do this or something. Like, come on here. Yeah, so I'm hoping that they have multiple broadcasts. I know that 2K has multiple announcers, so I'm I'm hoping that we get that with uh, NCAA. Or I guess it's EA College Sports or EA College Football 25. Yeah, through sorry. the NCAA. They're they're not involved in this in any way. Kick rocks, NCAA. Uh, I'm hoping that we get 
uh, like a Fox broadcast. But like we were talking before we recorded, I don't want Gus Johnson to be the Fox guy. I, I want it to be Jason Benetti and either Brock Heward or Joel Klatt. And I, I, I can live with either of those. But Gus is a little past his prime, I think, to be getting in this video game. Yeah, I want to make it clear to EA Sports, all the, the higher-ups that are watching this video right now, Derek Young pledged to buy two copies of the game <laughs> if you put Brock Heward in the game. Uh, so that there you go. I don't even know if DY owns a PlayStation 5. He would just buy the copies and let him sit there if you put Brock Heward in the game. So that's the kind of reach that, the, that Fox's true number one team has. Uh, any other thoughts on this game that uh, you want to throw out there before we jet out of here? Uh, I'm also a sicko and want like the college game day experience they used to get in the old NCAAs where Lee Corso just puts on the helmet or the mascot head of whoever like is about to play. Uh, I also am a, a true sicko and want like the recruiting to be kind of like how it was in a uh, 2k or the college hoops 2k8 where you can recruit like the younger classes and uh, just kind of do like a more immersive experience. Uh, just because, like, it, it, it's a video game. Make it authentic. I don't want, like, as soon as you get somebody to commit, like, they am instantly signed. No, I want to be sweating it out on signing day, being like, is my five-star receiver actually going to come here? Or is he getting an NIL deal from somewhere else? Yeah, Call of Duty 2K would drive me nuts with that. And it's like, <laughs> I've worked my butt off to get Mississippi Valley State all these four-star guys, and they're, like, 98% down to come here. And then here's signing day, and they're, you know, who needs Duke? You've got the Delta Devils to rely on. <laughs> Screw the Blue Devils. Then it never worked out. But I'm with you. I, I, I like when that stuff is a little bit uh, trickier to navigate. So we'll see how it goes. Because uh, 14, I thought recruiting was way too easy. Like yeah, you, could, yeah. you could cheese recruiting so easily on 14. So make it harder on this one. In that same vein, uh, obviously the first franchise or uh, dynasty mode you fire up, it'll be with K-State. But uh, who who are you starting with as an offensive coordinator in that uh, dynasty mode? Ooh. Uh, so I, I kind of like when I do some of these dynasties, like I am like, I want to go somewhere that is terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, I always go to one star. Give me the one star schools. Yeah. So like uh, UConn is somebody that I've thought about. <laughs> I've also thought about like this will be the first year that Kennesaw State will be FBS. So I've been mm. like, huh, Kennesaw State, go Owls. Uh, and and then I've also thought like a UMass would be another sicko option. Yeah, well, the the children of the poor school that I would go and play with, uh, low major, all this stuff is either Washington State or Oregon State. Uh, <laughs> that would I. I want to take those poor, tiny little schools to to college football glory, and you know maybe conference realignment fires up, and they can finally play with the big boys, you know, in the Big Twelve or uh, what, whatever it may be. So I, I want to help out the little guys, and that's who I'm going to be starting up with. I, I mean, conference realignment in the game is also going to be sick, and I, I hope that there's like a customizable playoff option where you can be like twelve teams, sixteen teams, fourteen, mm. eight teams, like. Give me all of that. Nah, Maybe I'm they'll bad. give me the option to put the BCS back in the game since I'm a big <laughs> BCS guy. That's my hope. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It is exciting nonetheless. And uh, look, uh, it's going to be fun when it comes out, likely in July, I would assume. And I, I, Drew and I are going to be taking some time off from the site when that happens and uh, yeah. we'll, uh well DY is buying two copies of Brock Heward's yeah. and so he might be taking some time off too. Yeah. I think I think night number one, I think we just fire it up immediately and you and I we stream to the KSO YouTube. We gotta uh, we gotta get it going right there. So I was gonna say for, for the first like week that the game is out, all of our content on here is just gonna be us playing NCA. And we'll have to we'll we'll get three views because everybody else will also be playing the game and they'll be like <laughs> What weirdo watches people play play games when they could play in themselves? I agree with that notion. I totally agree with that. So that will do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want real news, not video game news, head over to kstateonline.com with On3. Plenty of stuff about K-State football and basketball. Drew and I will be back tomorrow on Friday 
We'll have some recruiting news for you there as well to get everybody primed and ready to go. Also, uh, get ready for a basketball game in Manhattan. Back-to-back home games, tight turnaround Saturday to Monday for K-State basketball, who is just fighting for dignity at this point in the season. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching K-State Online.